Hey, Chris. Hey, Kyle. I have the new Starlings 3 here. I think you're gonna love them. Nice. Can't wait to check these out. Thanks. By the way, my car broke down, and I was wondering if you... Kyle? Oh. What the... Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Stop it. Stop it. Don't... No, no. What's happening? Hey, be quiet in here. Oh! <laughs> Kyle wasn't prepared to be blown away by the new Silent Wings 3 fans from Be Quiet. Are you? For a cooler, quieter system, click on the link in the description for more info. <laughs> What's up guys? So it is already September here in 2016 and that means it's time for another PC of the month. For today's rig I wanted to see how much gaming performance we could squeeze out of a $1,000 budget. Obviously CPU and GPU are going to play a big role here and typically speaking they also happen to be the two most expensive components in a gaming PC. So I had to be incredibly frugal when possible without sacrificing too much in any one area. Otherwise we could end up with a high-end SLI configuration powered by a russet potato. That said, I think I've managed to part out a well-balanced system that won't kick you in the coin purse, but can still eat maxed out AAA games for breakfast. So let's dive into the parts I picked out, starting with the Core i5-6600K from Intel, paired with the Gigabyte Z170M D3H. CPU overclocking was a key feature to have in this build in order to maximize our in-game performance, and although our board may not be engineered to hit the highest overclocks, we should still be able to achieve some moderate gains to cop us a few extra FPS. We also get some useful connections like this PCIe NVMe M.2 slot, even though we're too poor to actually populate it with anything. For memory, I found this 2x8 gig kit of DDR4 at 2400 from Mushkin's Blackline series. My penny pinching almost had me resort to using just 8 gigs for this system, but this competitively priced option allowed us to fit the rig with a dual channel 16 gig kit, leaving two slots on the motherboard open for expandability in the future. Cooling our CPU is none other than the Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master. Excellent bang for the buck value, quiet operation, and easy installation make this a no-brainer when trying to shave costs down while still having enough thermal dissipation at your disposal to hit some nice overclocks. Now the core component in any gaming PC that determines most of its gaming performance is of course the GPU, so I've allocated nearly half of our $1,000 budget to squeeze in this GTX 1070 Amp Edition from Zotac. When I said the system would be able to crush some maxed out AAA titles, I wasn't just referring to 1920 by 1080 but 2560x1440 as well. The card is fitted with 8 gigs of GDDR5 comes factory overclocked to 1797 megahertz and can be manually tweaked further with the help of an additional 8-pin power plug while the carbon-wrapped ice storm cooler keeps thermals in check. Cool, quiet, and apparently faster than a QA inspection at SpaceX, this card really opens up the possibilities of everything from quad HD gaming to buttery smooth VR experiences. For storing our games library, we have a 500 gig 7200 RPM Hitachi drive. This was the cheapest mechanical option at this capacity that I could find at the time, and it just so happens to sport the two and a half inch form factor. Now I could have left out an SSD entirely to keep our cost to an absolute minimum, but then again, booting on a mechanical drive in a $1,000 PC is kind of like pairing a prime grade ribeye steak with a lukewarm can of natty ice. So here we have a 120 gig S60 from Silicon Power, though this may very well be the natty ice of SSDs. Truth be told, I actually meant to snag the cheaper S55 model to stay within budget, then realized my mistake once this showed up at my doorstep. Even though I'll be building with this drive today, I will be running all benchmarks in a follow-up video using the S55 when it arrives. If we had a bit more spending power here, I would have definitely doubled down on our capacity, but for now we'll just have to be storage conscious about what goes onto this SSD. Powering up our machine is the Corsair CX550M. This unit comes at a killer price for what you get, 80 plus bronze certification, a partially modular design, and flat black cables. I also like having just over that 500 watt requirement for the GTX 1070 for peace of mind when overclocking. And finally, all of our parts will run inside of this Apevia XQPAC 3 Micro ATX case. Purchased for a mere $50 on Newegg, I'm half terrified that this is just a cardboard box that some Chinese guy spray painted black. But it received surprisingly favorable reviews on Amazon, and I've had plenty of good luck with budget cases at this price point in the past, so I'll gladly take the gamble if it gets us one step closer to meeting our budget. You do get internal steel construction and dual side panel windows, which is a nice touch for these boxy cases which feature horizontal mother 
motherboard layouts. I will suggest for those of you considering this chassis to pick up a 120mm exhaust fan to complement the only included 140mm intake, and perhaps a USB 3 hub for more convenient access should the single 3.0 port on the front not suffice. Altogether, the total cost of this build at the time of creating this PC part picker list came out to $1,003. Admittingly, the removal of a few mail-in rebates would have added $30 to our final bill, but fortunately that's still not too far off from our $1,000 budget. Now if there's anything I'm concerned about with this rig, it's what I just mentioned a minute ago, which is the chassis' ability to provide ample airflow with its single fan to keep our components cool under long gaming sessions. But assuming that works out come testing time, the prospect of having this much horsepower power in a $1,000 PC is pretty exciting. So let's put this thing together and see how she looks. Alright y'all, so thus ends part one of September's PC of the Month. There's much more to say about this rig, so stay tuned for part two, where we do a full system analysis of thermals, acoustics, and most importantly, gaming benchmarks. Let me know what you guys think of the build so far, and what you would have done differently with the budget at hand. Before you guys go, don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to check the description below for shirts in my store and all dem product links to everything we featured in today's video. As always, thank you guys for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video.